and welcome to the Accountability Coach Podcast, where we discuss proven business success principles related to helping you make more money, work less, so you can enjoy even better work-life balance. And back right here. Today, I am super excited about our very special guest. Perry Marshall is one of the most sought after and expensive business strategists in the world. Endorsed in Forbes and in Inc. Magazine, he's guided clients like FanDuel and Infusionsoft from startup to hundreds of millions of dollars. Perry has helped tens of thousands of small companies become big companies by applying advanced 80-20 to online advertising. Now, in his newest book, Detox, Declutter, Dominate, How to Excel by Elimination is for business owners who are overworked, overwhelmed, and struggling to keep up with their ever-growing to-do list. And I'm sure he will have some great insight for us today. Welcome, Perry. We appreciate you being with us. Good to be here, Ann. We got a lot of really important things we're going to cover today. So buckle in. <laughs> I'm super excited. I've got a pad of paper ready to take notes as well. So I'm going to go back just a little bit. And you wrote a book called 8020 Sales and Marketing, The Definitive Guide to Working Less and Making More. Now, I'm curious, what are your thoughts around 8020 as it relates to the current business environment? Well, it's the most important thing that you could learn in business. And I realize that is a pretty big statement. And I know there's only about 87,000 business books that all claim to say that, but I, I really believe it's true. 8020 is the simplest way to explain why just about any good strategy is a good strategy. In fact, about a week ago, I had a podcast interview uh, with a woman and ab about halfway through the interview, her brain melted because she suddenly realized that not only was 80-20 embedded in just about everything she'd ever done, but that it, it was a much deeper rabbit hole than she had imagined. Uh, so so let me let me try to to explain what I mean by that. So probably 20 years ago, I was, I was a sales manager in a, in a software company. And I read somewhere that 20% of your customers generate 80% of your sales. And I thought, is that true? And I printed out a QuickBooks report and I went through it literally with a calculator. And I'm like, I'll be darned. That's actually true. And then I didn't really do anything about it. And I think it's because I, I didn't really understood what it meant. Now, a lot of people know that a guy, an Italian guy named Pareto, figured out 100 years ago that in all the different countries he studied, 20% of the people had 80% of the real estate, 20% of the people had 80% of the wealth. And I'd heard that. But the dot that I hadn't connected was that this is a universal law of cause and effect. And not only that, it's a law within a law within a law. Okay, so it doesn't just apply to real estate in Italy or the sales of most companies. It applies to almost everything that happens anywhere in the world. Like 80% of the dirt is on 20% of the carpet in your house because that's where you walk. And you spend 80% of your time in 20% of the rooms. And almost every spreadsheet and every report and every product defect and traffic and Facebook and Google and everything, all of those things are 80-20. And not only that, there's a top 20% inside the top 20%. And that produces 80% of the 80%. Now, I just, it only took me like, I don't know, maybe two minutes to explain that, but you can spend the rest of your life seeing where the rabbit hole goes. And it's it's incredibly powerful. And, and what it means is that most people are wasting enormous amounts of time and pushing themselves to work harder and to work faster and to run in the squirrel cage even more and make it spin even faster. And they're working the complete wrong end of the lever. And so, uh, like, especially right now, you've got a global pandemic, you've got, I don't know, a fourth of the businesses are shut down. You've got people, you know, all the insanity going on in social media. There, there has never been a time where 80 20 
wasn't more transformative because it can completely change your life. So what do you think are just maybe one or two 80-20 principles that you feel represent the greatest opportunity for business owners today when looking at their business? So 80-20 applies to your time. So 20% of your time generates 80% of your money and opportunities. And 20% of 20% of your time generates 80% of 80%. And so the fact is, is that last year, half your income you earned in about three to five days, not 250 days, three to five. And now this isn't particularly obvious to most salary people. You know, everybody's arguing about minimum wage and stuff like that. This is super obvious to people who are entrepreneurs or work on straight commission. You say any salesperson, if I say, you know, last year, half of your sales commissions came from about three to five days of your actual efforts. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, there was that Zoom call I had on April 14. And there was that meeting I had June 21st. And there was that conference I went to in August. And there was, oh, yeah. That's true, right? And so like, you know, so let's say you have a receptionist named Helen at a dental office and she makes 15 bucks an hour and she answers the phone. Um, and the way she thinks about money is, well, I hope I could get a raise and make 1650. That would be 10%, that would be amazing. That's how she thinks about time. But the way her time really works is, the phone rings and she goes, Wood Lake Dental, please hold. And then two, two minutes later, she picks it up and the person left. Well, what she doesn't know is they were getting ready to spend $5,000 on crown work and she just lost $5,000 in two minutes. Well, that's $150,000 an hour. So a $15 an hour person can lose. $15,000 an hour for two minutes. Sorry, $150,000 an hour. And not even know it. And the dentist doesn't know it. And the office manager doesn't know it. And it hugely impacts the bottom line. And, and remember, they spent the money on the advertising. Like all that money got spent. You know, they clicked on an expensive ad or they got, you know, it, it might have cost uh, $200 for that phone call to come in. And so Helen's time is not worth $15 an hour. It's worth $150,000 an hour for really short periods of time. And that's how time actually works. And most people are oblivious to this. They don't even think about it. That is really interesting. So there's obviously dozens of simple ways to use the 80-20 principle to shave one or two hours of work off every single day and then yep. still get more done is what you're saying. So what would be, I guess, the best one or ones that we could think about and apply right away? Well, so you have to start becoming attentive to this. So in uh, in both 80-20 Sales and Marketing and the recent Detox Declutter Dominate book, both of those books have a chart and it shows $10 an hour, $100 an hour, $1,000 an hour, and $10,000 an hour tasks. And it's got a whole list of them for each one. Most people have never thought of their time as being worth $10,000 an hour. But in fact, that two minute phone call, if it's picked up right away and directed the right person immediately, who knows what they're talking about and knows how to handle that phone call, that's $10,000 an hour. Or let's say Helen calls a meeting and she goes, hey, you know, we, ha we had a, somebody called in and they got put on hold and they left and, and nobody got to them. And that might've been a $5,000 bit of crown work. Let's get together and figure out everything we need to do to make sure that never ever happens again. And it might involve most of the staff, but let's figure that out. Well, those meetings and those systems that get produced out of that, that's easily $1,000 an hour work for everybody. And so 
um, you, you start to recognize there are these levers, there are these tiny hinges that swing big doors and they're laying all over the place and they're mostly being ignored. Meanwhile, everybody's trying to look busy. I mean, have you ever thought about how hard people try to look busy and, oh, also, well, hi, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. What's going on? Oh, just crazy busy. It's a status symbol, especially if I'm too busy to talk to you. Well, then I'm better than you, right? Like, so, and we, we kind of hide behind our busyness where I find the most, some of the most productive time I have is, is empty space where I'm deliberately not doing anything. In fact, I engineer anywhere from two to four hours a day where I don't have any per, anything in particular where I'm supposed to be showing up or talking to somebody or answering emails or being in meetings so that I can think about what I'm doing and create and imagine and explore. And that's so fun, that'll make you feel guilty. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what I'm getting from this is basically we don't have to take the whole year to really earn what we wanna earn. We could just do it in three to five days. What, okay, what, what were your, what, what were the five days in 2020 that brought in half of your income? Like stop and figure it out. Like what actually happened? I mean, you can, you can go through your sales, your clients, your, your paychecks or wh whatever and go, well, hmm, you know, what was it? And, you know, in that deal, uh, not, it was not only the time, but, you know, you you landed a big client. Well, 20% of what you were offering them was 80% of why they signed on the dotted line. There were a couple of major levers that they wanted that nobody else was going to give them or reasons why they trusted you or things that you did to prove your competence. It wasn't everything. It was a few things. And so 80-20 says that less is more. Yeah, so that's a really good point is to really figure out, hey, how can I replicate what really brought in half the income? Yes. And, and, and just focus on that. Sometimes you don't even know. I, I, I'm doing some fundraising for some cancer research right now. And a guy wrote a $5,000 check a couple of weeks ago and I texted him a week later. I said, what was the most significant thing I said that got you to write the check? And he goes, well, it, it was finding out that the scientists actually figured out a way to reverse cancerous cells back to normal cells and the government won't fund the research because it's too weird. And I'm like, well, there you go. I'll make sure I tell that story next time. So you know, like the, the levers, they're, they're hiding in plain sight. And, and, you, and you just have to start asking questions. And well, that, that means being curious. And unfortunately, most people aren't very curious. Super good point. So let's transition to your newest book, The Detox, Declutter, and Dominate. And you talk about seven principles that always work, are true for any business, and will be just as valid 50 years from now as they are today. Let's go over what these seven principles are. Yes, yeah, so there's, like you said, seven of them. Uh, one, use Renaissance time to gain discernment and clarity. Two, make your business twice as profitable with 80-20 focus. Three, earn $1,000 an hour, at least one hour a day with 80-20 time. Number four, create an irresistible product that's a joy to use by simplifying. Step five, carve out the niche where you're the undisputed number one, be a star principle. Six, build an impenetrable moat around your business in seven, Enjoy freedom to create and reinvent every single day. Now, obviously, we don't have time to go into all of these, but uh, again, like you said, I want to point out that these are these are true for any business of any size. They are just as true 
in 2071 as they are in 2021. They'll still be true in 50 years. And I can't think of any other book that can say that. And, you know, there's so much bright, shiny object syndrome going on in the world. And somebody is always in your email box and always in your Facebook feed with something new that you need to do. Oh, you're you're missing out. You're you're completely missing out on this. And you know, everybody's making a lot of money doing this thing. And like you're stuck in your sameness. And and it just never stops. It goes on and on and on and on. And you know, you could never run out of fear of missing out. And just with with, with the deluge of advice and information, I said. What can you tell people that is still what you would tell them 50 years from now? Like if there's one plan you could just stick to, what is it? And this is it. This will work. And it does work. So I believe step six is build an impenetrable moat around your business to really help insulate your business from competition. Can you yes. elaborate a little bit more on that or what that would look like? Yes. Yeah, so you know, I'm the, I wrote the book on Google advertising, which is the world's most best-selling book on internet advertising. Uh, that's uh, Ultimate Guide to Google Ads. And so because of that, in like I, I lived through the, the massive revolution of online advertising that has happened. Basically, it started around 2005 and the whole English language was for sale. And this created a lot of businesses that suddenly were making 10,000 or even $100,000 a month almost overnight. And then I watched most of those businesses go up in flames. And they, why? Because they didn't have any insulation against competition. There was a lot of those businesses where they were just arbitraging some inequality in the marketplace and erected a toll booth somewhere and collect a lot of money. And then it turned into like an internet shanty town. And like there was a flood and it washed the cardboard houses away. And I became very disinterested in just spinning up the next temporary victory. Uh, I just don't think that's very interesting. I'm interested in businesses that last a long time where you don't have to hustle every single day to stay alive, okay? And and so if you have a castle, but you don't have a moat around your castle, you're not going to have a castle very long. And and so step six says there are 20th century moats. And those are things like land and buildings and capital and manufacturing equipment and, you know, and just distribution channels and stuff like that. Um, and those are useful. <clears throat> but 21st century moats are forms of network effect. Now, what's that? Network effect is when, for example, Uber gets more riders, which attracts more drivers, which lowers the wait time, which attracts more riders, which attracts more drivers, which lowers the wait time. And you roll that tape 10 years, and no sane company would ever start a taxi business because you could never get down to a five minute wait time for any finite amount of money with a new company. Okay, and eBay works that way, and Facebook works that way, and Amazon works that way. And now most people think that you have to spend billions of dollars of venture capital to get that, but you don't. I coined a term, it's called network effect for mere mortals. And it's when regular people with elbow grease can create those virtuous circles. So I'll give you an example. There's, there's a story in the detox book about a company called Roof Simple in Washington, DC. And a guy named Mark McShirley, he started this company in the first year of his company, they, he was living in his wife's parents' basement taking anxiety pills, and he was selling Catholic bulletin advertising. And now that's a gig. That's a hot sales gig right there, is selling Catholic bulletin church advertisements. 
for $40,000 a year. <clears throat> so he and his friend started this roofing company and he said, I am going to make buying a roof a pleasurable experience from the very first Google search all the way to the person writing the check at the very end with no nails in the yard and nobody tracking dirt in the house and none of the silly games that roofing salesmen have been trained to play by their industry. You go, I'm not even going to hire this, the kind of people the roofing industry usually hires. And he completely rethought the roofing business to make it a pleasure. And um, he's now got 300 Google reviews, 4.8 stars. Now, 300 Google reviews with 4.8 stars is exhibit A of network effect for mere mortals. Why? Because reviews attract reviews. If you search for a roofer in Washington, D.C., and one of them's got 300 reviews and 4.8 stars, and that, the next one has four stars, six reviews, and the next one has one and a half stars and three reviews, which one are you going to pick? Okay, now, there's a bunch of examples of this, and we, we don't have time to go into this today, but there's, there's a whole section about this in, in this book where they're kind of invisible until they're too strong to overcome and all of a sudden wow not only do you have a moat in your castle there's piranhas in the moat and it's a whole lot harder to compete with you than they think and then you have the breathing room and the high margins that you need to then go do whatever the next thing is that you want to do because most business owners, frankly, are just slowly suffocating and starving to death. And there's never enough money and they're always hustling to meet payroll and they're always tapping their line of credit and they're always putting things on credit cards. And the root reason is because they don't have a moat around their castle. So you have low margins and, and you're, you don't easily compete with everybody else. And there's not a clear differentiation between you and everybody else. And then you just have to hustle for a living until you die. And I'm here to say, business doesn't have to be that way. Life doesn't have to be that way. My life is not that way. And yours doesn't have to be either. So what would you recommend for a small business owner wanting to basically increase their online marketing strategy and you know, stay up and running, get increased their visibility? What would you recommend they do? You know, I've I've got a an email series called the 30 Day Street MBA. It's on my homepage at perrymarshall.com, and um and you you can go through that email series. It, it I promise you, it'll punch you in the face from the very first day. Uh, and so if you get like get getting punched in the face, sign up because you'll love it. Um, one of the things that I teach is what I call the principle, the $2,700 espresso machine. Now, what, what is that? Well, 80-20 says that 80% of your money wants to come from 20% of your customers, and 20% of your customers want to give you more money. And 4% of your customers want to give you two-thirds of your money. And 1% of, of your customers want to give you half of your money. So what that means is, let's say you manage a coffee shop like a Starbucks. And a 1,000 people every day, every week, let's say, uh, spend five bucks on a latte. The 80-20 principle pretty much guarantees you that one of those 1,000 people will spend 2,700 bucks on a gleaming stainless steel espresso machine because money is burning a hole in their pocket and they want to scratch their coffee itch. And that means if you don't have an espresso machine, you just left $2,700 of sales on the table. And what it, what it ends up meaning is that selling lattes keeps the lights on, probably doesn't really make you any money. And all of your profit comes from selling an espresso machine which most people wouldn't even notice. It's, you know, it's, it's sitting there on the counter and it's for sale and it has a price tag. Most people ignore it, but 
like a bunch of your profit comes from 0.1% of your customers. And so generally with really small businesses and freelancers and independent contractors, the most profitable thing they can do is go, all right, I've got 10 customers. One of them would spend 10 times more money if I offered them something that was an absolute complete solution. And the point of this is you don't have to get new customers for this to work. Your existing customers will write you the check and they want to write you the check. And if you don't have an espresso machine, they're writing the check to somebody else who will sell them one. Oh, well, somebody has a coffee barista cruise in the Mediterranean, I'm gonna go to that. Well, you could sell it to them or some travel agent could sell it to them, but they're going. Any final great words of wisdom or ideas of great wisdom for us? You can't think your own thoughts and everybody else's thoughts at the same time. And uh, step one in the book is Renaissance time. And Renaissance time is my word for the at least 20 minutes that you spend in the morning before you go on CNN, before you go on Facebook, before you open your email box, before you do anything like that, you sit down and I don't care if you pray, if you meditate, if you journal, if you listen to music, if you um, sit by the pond or the lake, I, I don't really care what you do, but like it's the time you give yourself for discernment, wisdom, clarity, prayer, meditation in the morning. That is the best way to start your day. The worst way to start your day is alarm goes off, pull phone or other device into bed and start the death scroll. That is the worst possible way to start your day. And it, it kicks you into cortisol jetting through your brain, crisis, argument, fight, refund, customer complaint, return, charge back, criticism, fight, argument, Democrats, Republicans, Trump, Hillary, Biden, blah, blah, blah. Worst way to start your day. Start your day with Renaissance time. Give yourself permission. Uh, write down the idea that came to you in the shower. Get your, get your thoughts together for the day. Think about the things you're grateful for. Get focused. Decide what's important today. Do that first. It will totally change your life. And I know, listen, I know that's easy for me to say. I have not missed a day in seven and a half years. Totally changed my life. I'm also curious about the, you mentioned a 30-day program that's going to punch you in the face. So I don't know that I want to punch in the face, but I'm curious about that. Could you oh, share a little the, bit more about that? <laughs> the 30-day street MBA. Um, go to perrymarshall.com and just scroll down and you'll find it on the page. It is 30 days of everybody's telling you to do this, but you really need to do that. Everybody's saying, do this. Hey, I promise you, that's not even going to work two years from now. Here's something that'll work two months from now, two years from now, 20 years from now. One of the most common comments that I get from my customers is, so Perry, I got into online marketing and I signed up, I got on all these email lists and one by one by one, I started unsubscribing from them and you're the only one that was left at the end. And I hear that over and over and over again. And bright, shiny objects are the enemy of entrepreneurs and lasting businesses. And the way business really works is it runs on principles that you don't change. And if you embrace the principles, a whole bunch of that noise and commotion and confusing banter and barnacles in the marketplace just kind of goes away. Well, I might be up for that punch in the face. <laughs> it sounds good to me. So I'm assuming the best way for people to get your newest book, Detox, Declutter and Dominate, is to go to Amazon. Is that right? Yes. Yes. It's, uh, it's about nine bucks. It's 36 pages, by the way, and there is more actionable content in these 36 pages than most books have in three, six, 360 pages. 
it it's got graphics it has charts it's you can read the whole thing in an hour and it will keep you on track for the next 20 years detox declutter dominate it's on amazon great i love it and i i actually really like the shorter books that are compacted with you know okay here do this instead yeah. of all the extra words around it that take up the extra 100 pages or whatever it is so i'm excited actually to get your get your book right away well, uh, well my co-author came to me and he goes this was uh, a year ago this was a 150 page book and my my co-author came to me he goes perry i 80 20 your book i chopped it down to 8,000 words i'm like oh well thank you and i i really wasn't too sure at the beginning but he he was brilliantly right and and, and so again 80 20 even applies to books 80 percent of the values in 20 percent of the books so i i just i just cut out the 80 percent and gave you the 20. I love it. Well, thanks again for your time today. And I've taken at least a page of notes here. So I'm excited to get my punch in the face, read your book and have even greater success in my life. So thanks, thanks for sharing. You. Thanks for having me. Well, my hope for our time together with Perry Marshall is that you got a lot of value and an idea or two or three or even more that will help you be even more successful professionally and personally. Feel free to share my podcast with others as they can be found on most podcast platforms and in most English speaking countries, as well as on accountabilitycoach.com. If you'd like to get a short daily fix from me, of course, subscribe to my accountability minute, which can also be found on most podcast platforms and in most English speaking countries, as well as on accountabilitycoach.com. And always remember to aim for what you want each and every day. Until next time, make it a great day today and every day. Thanks for listening.